Yo, welcome back. This is Stu42 with another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to just have a quick recap. So this will be one of my uh, showcase style of episodes, I think. Uh, just to show what's going on with uh, my B setup, the automation. I mean, the last several episodes have been all about getting everything from seed oil to string to... Um, you know, frames automatically created, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's all come together. It's been running for a couple of days now. Uh, everything is nearly balanced. It's not not as good as it could be. Uh, but I thought I would just recap over everything because there's been a few tweaks along the way. So here we have our alvearies. Uh, I'm using three of them in the end. I have uh, refined bees in these two. I switched this one out for a distilled bee. Uh, I was getting too much fuel and not enough oil, so I switched this one out for the distilled so I get more oil. Uh, that's just the way I've got the, the liquid balancing downstairs. Uh, this cotton farm, as you see in, um, again, one of the previous episodes, I go through the setup of this, and this is nearly balanced. I think I need a few more plants. It's gradually been draining my string, so uh, I might plant an extra row in here at some point. Uh, I've ended up with three chestnut trees with my multi-farm underneath, and that is sort of keeping up with my seed oil. I need to balance it a little bit more still. Uh, these guys, as you can see, holding a jungle sapling, uh, I was using just a single 2x2 two two jungle tree and it wasn't quite enough. I did have two 2x2 two two jungle trees uh, and that was making a lot of wood. So I've just changed it this morning to a 2x2 a two two and then just a single one to, to supplement the wood production. And these are just... I showed a video of setting these up for doing the chestnut trees. It, it failed for seed oil but it's working brilliantly for the, uh, for the jungle wood. So you've got to get your chopper, your collector, and your planter. In fact, if I hold my Golemancer's bell, it shows uh, him set to plant those things there. So down underneath, so that's the that's the production of well, all the all the raw materials, I guess. So down underneath, we have. So as you can see, my because my wood production was a bit too high, I have started using this. Was full. Uh, it's hovering around there now. So we'll see after another 24 hours how that's going. Uh, as you can see, the oil tank it is completely full now. It's only just gotten full. Uh, fuel tank also full. We have right that pipe is empty-ish. In fact, what you'll see, you'll see here something should happen a bit interesting. So here I have this redstone receiver, which is now off. Now this redstone receiver should actually go on very, very shortly now that this pipe is empty. Maybe not. So what that redstone receiver is doing is what I wanted to do is I wanted to always make sure I used fuel before using oil. And so what that does is because it's all hooked up to the same piping, my fuel was getting jammed up. So what it does is it'll always keep the fuel on until this tank dips a little bit like it has just then. This should go on very shortly if it's if it's working correctly. This has been working brilliantly up until now. Oh there we go. No. Anyway, this computer is what's what's doing it. So it is sitting there measuring the percentage used there we go and now it's and now it's set going so what what this computer program does is it actually monitors it's got the transmitter underneath it's sitting on a valve block and all it does is it monitors the percentage in the tank and if it's less than less than one which is a hundred percent there we go it's back to a hundred so it's turn the turn the redstone off if it drops below a hundred percent then it will grab fuel from these instead. And what that does is it just makes sure that I can have two completely separate feeds. I've got a fuel feed and one from the refineries, but I prefer this one. I couldn't find a decent way of doing it. It was it was a bit unreliable. Sometimes it just drained oil. I mean, I don't know of the rules behind the mod. I think it might be to do with which thing is more west of the other, because that's how it processes 
like how the server decides what thing to work out first. I'm, I'm really unsure about it is what I'm saying. So to guarantee it, I put that computer in there um, and then it makes sure that out of the two sources going into the one destination, it it always prefers to take the fuel before it takes the oil. Uh, and that just means I don't get any any fuel overflowing over here. Uh, if you do want a copy of that program, it is incredibly basic. Just leave me a comment in the comment section and I will make that program available for you. Um, yeah, it was a, a two second thing to write. So so yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. We still have our squeeze, as you can see, oil is starting to back up now, which is yeah, not fantastic. I'm gonna have to maybe find a way of stopping the alvearies when I've got too much fuel. The uh, I have changed to having four centrifuges. I did have just uh, the one, uh, and that wasn't enough. And then I divided into two, one for oil, one for fuel, and that just wasn't quite enough. So what I've now got is I've got an item router inserting into top sides. I have the um, machine filter set to only visit near, and factory dot two seems to be the ID of these uh, forestry centrifuges. So uh, that just is set to put both of the combs into all of these and that works just fine and of course this one is for the fuel. Uh, what else have we got here? We have the squeezer for the seed oil so that's taking in the chestnuts. This is set to make the impregnated sticks. This one is set to make the frames. Uh, this is set to make the string and as we can see in here we now have 1,300 string. I did have 5,000 in here, so that's slowly going down. Uh, I was going to make some soul frames. We have a lot of honey runoff, 103,000 honey. So what I've actually done is I've made another secret room under here. I've used a deep storage unit to store the honey uh, until I decide what to do. I also have this set up. Now this is a chest back to my other base with an import bus, and it is basically set to export frames when I have more than 64 of them in stock. Uh, and that is just because I wanted to do some bee things back at my, my main base uh, and I wanted frames. So rather than having two separate things that make frames, I thought I'd just do it that way instead. And this is not making enough frames. All right, so that, that extra jungle tree upstairs might not be enough. Anyway, I'll look at that in a second. Now up here underneath uh, these, these of course are all set to you know, keep a frame in every block. That might be what I do because I'm making too much fuel at the moment or too much oil. What I could possibly do is just not put as many frames in. So I'll clear those frames out. Uh, I might just clear the ones out at the ends as well. And that'll both help our frame production and wood production rates as well as lowering the output of this uh, for oil. So we just don't need that much oil. Around here we have the multi farm for the seed oil. I've added this level emitter here to a farm control block. Now, if you put a control block right in the middle and you put the redstone signal right from the like, not not from either side. If you if you put a redstone signal from the side, it deactivates that side of the farm. But if you put it right in the middle like this, then it deactivates the whole farm. And what this is doing is, if I get 64 chestnuts in the AE system, it'll stop the farm because yeah, I just I don't want to overrun with chestnuts. So that was working. So down here, what happens is this gets full, the pipe gets completely full, this one here, and this thing fills up completely with chestnuts, and then the AE system starts overflowing with chestnuts. And I just decided arbitrarily that 64 would be a, a good number here to have. And that's making more frames. I wonder if it'll... Oh yeah, the frames are pretty slow to make, so there's obviously a, a jungle tree being cut down right now, so that's why it's it's making the frames. I might just, while I'm recording, yeah, so I've got it holding four frames in there as well, and that's full, which means we should see some frames starting to appear in here. Yeah, there we go, there's one. So oh, I'm two, uh, I'll put that one back as well, three, yep, so that's good. So if that gets up to 64, then it'll dump the rest into my other base. So that's that's pretty much it for the whole setup. Uh, as I said, this video is really just a quick whirlwind tour of the final, 
the final setup of this. This is more than enough to run three boilers. The, I've got this one running and I've started, uh, I'm not sure you remember, but in one of the previous episodes because I was running out of fuel, I turned this one off. I've since turned it back on. So we're running all three boilers off this quite successfully and having more than enough. In fact, I'm going to have to do something either with the surplus oil or stop the alvearies. I'm not sure what I'll do here. I might pump the fuel back through a tesseract to my other base and try and stop using biofuel. Uh, you might notice on my mini-map in the corner there are the, the blue squares. That's from a mod called uh, Opus, uh, which I've enabled on the server and on the clients, and that lets me see which chunks are being laggy. Uh, so those squares being blue mean they're pretty good. That top one there is starting to discolor a little bit, which means there's some things there that are potentially lagging the server out, but nothing to worry about. It's only when those squares get red that things are bad. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, again, if you have questions on any part of it uh, and you want elaboration, then by all means, uh, throw me a question in the comments. Otherwise, uh, the previous videos, the previous, I don't know, there must have been six or seven videos on my process through setting this up, through sorting out the seed oil, sorting out the strings, sorting out the chestnuts, getting the frames automatically done. Uh, the last two episodes I've uploaded have actually, I've gone back to a quick how-to on how to breed the bees in the first place. So uh, hopefully all the information is there if you want to have a similar setup. So as always, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.